Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about stomach ultrasound. Ultrasound is not the primary modality for gastric evaluation. CT, MRI, and endoscopy are usually preferred. Still, certain gastric diseases can be appreciated sonographically, especially if the stomach is well distended with water. It is more helpful in pediatric cases. Proper preparation is required to scan the stomach, especially in adults, such as fasting for 8 hours and drinking water prior to the scan. Sometimes oral cellulose contrast agents are also used. We will discuss both pediatric and adult cases. First, we will look at the layers of the stomach seen on ultrasound. The layers and their appearance are similar to small bowel. These images show the normal antrum of the stomach in transverse plane. The lumen is filled with fluid, which is why it appears mostly anechoic. This image is obtained with a high-frequency linear probe with good image quality. We are able to see all the layers separately. Starting from the innermost layer, the superficial mucosa appears echogenic. This echogenic layer is also the interface between the stomach fluid and the mucosa. This is the first layer. The second layer is in the deep mucosa. This layer is hypoechoic. The echogenicity alternates between hyperechoic and hypoechoic layers. After the deep mucosa, we have the submucosa, which will be echogenic. The fourth layer is the muscularis propria or simply the muscularis. It is hypoechoic and is usually the thickest layer of the stomach. The outermost layer is the echogenic serosa. This echogenic line is the serosa. Both the innermost and outermost layers are echogenic. The innermost mucosa is echogenic and the outermost serosa is also echogenic. We will also look at the five layers in this image as well. You can see the innermost echogenic layer, the superficial mucosa, followed by the hypoechoic deep mucosa, then we have the echogenic submucosa. The fourth layer and the thickest layer is the muscularis, and the outermost layer is the serosa. The image on the left shows the antrum of the stomach. It was empty, so it had a collapsed appearance. Correct wall measurement is not possible in an empty stomach. When the stomach is distended with water, then we can take the measurements. This image is of a 10-year-old child. It is in the longitudinal plane. We can also see the liver here. The image on the right shows a distended antrum with hypoechoic gastric contents. This image was also obtained from a 10-year-old child. Usually if the stomach is distended, you may find dirty shadowing which will obscure the image. So the best way to visualize the stomach is making the patient fast for 8 hours and the stomach is filled with water or an oral contrast agent. Simply water is enough in most cases. It is also easier to scan the stomach in infants and children. This image is of an adult patient. We are seeing a water-filled antrum in the longitudinal plane. It is filled with water which acts as a good acoustic window and contrast. The lumen is hypoechoic with some small air bubbles. This is a normal appearance. We can make out some of the layers. The antrum and the pylorus of the stomach are usually scanned on ultrasound when there is an indication. This image shows the normal pylorus in an infant. And this image shows a normal pylorus in an adult patient in the transverse plane. The normal pyloric wall thickness in adults is between 3 and 8 millimeters. Now we will look at stomach pathologies and compare their ultrasound images with normal cases. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis occurs in infants. It is an abnormal thickening of the pylorus which causes gastric outlet obstruction. 
Its clinical presentation includes projectile, non-bilious vomiting, palpable olive-shaped mass in the right upper abdomen or epigastrium, which is the hypertrophied pylorus, and visible gastric peristalsis called caterpillar waves across the abdomen after feeding. Now we will look at its ultrasound findings. The normal pyloric wall thickness is less than 3 mm in infants. The normal pyloric canal length is less than 15 mm approximately, and the normal pylorus transverse diameter is less than 12 mm approximately. This image shows the normal pylorus in transverse plane. Its hypoechoic wall is not thick, and it measured less than 3 mm, which is a normal measurement. In pyloric stenosis, the pyloric wall thickness will be greater than 3 mm. Here you can see this hypoechoic pyloric wall is thickened. It is much thicker than normal. So this is seen in pyloric stenosis. This appearance is termed the target sign and also the donut sign. It is the classic transverse ultrasound appearance of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. In a normal pylorus, we will not see a donut sign or target sign. These are longitudinal views focusing on the pylorus in infants. On the left is a normal image showing the pyloric canal. The normal pyloric canal length is less than 15 mm, the pyloric transverse diameter is less than 12 mm. In the image on the right, we see a thickened, enlarged pyloric canal. The muscle wall thickness can also be measured in this view. It is greater than 3 mm. You can see that it is thickened. This hypoechoic layer is very prominent. The canal length in such cases is usually 15 mm or even greater. It can even be 20 mm depending on the severity. In pyloric stenosis, the transverse diameter of the pylorus is greater than 12 mm in infants. The pyloric volume will be greater than 1.5 cubic centimeters. This appearance of the enlarged pyloric canal is called the cervix sign because it resembles the uterine cervix on ultrasound. You can see the similarity between the cervix and the hypertrophied pylorus. Another sign seen in the same image is the antral nipple sign. It refers to this protrusion of the pyloric mucosa into the gastric antrum. This pyloric mucosal protrusion is another sign seen in pyloric stenosis. Abizor refers to indigestible material such as hair and plant fibers that can cause obstruction in the gastrointestinal tract. Here is a case of a gastric bezoar in a pediatric patient. On ultrasound, a bezoar can appear as an intragastric mass with a hyperechoic surface, which often produces clean posterior acoustic shadowing. You see a hyperechoic arc with black posterior shadowing. This is usually how a bezoar appears. Here is another case of a gastric bezoar. The stomach is filled with a hyperechoic shadowing structure. It has a hyperechoic surface with a dark shadow. Here is a case showing gastritis. Normally, ultrasound is not performed for such cases. The main feature of gastritis is increased wall thickening. This is how a normal antrum appears. The normal antral wall thickness in adults is less than 5 mm. This image shows a case of H. pylori gastritis. You can see the increased thickness of the antral wall. It measures more than 5 mm. This image shows the body of the stomach in the transverse plane. This image is taken after the patient ingests an oral cellulose contrast agent, which makes the stomach lumen echogenic and outlines the wall. 
it is easier to scan it with the contrast agent. It gives the lumen a homogeneous appearance. In this image, we have a case of a gastric ulcer. This image is also taken after intake of oral contrast agent. Ultrasound is not the primary modality for gastric ulcers. However, there is one feature which can help in initial evaluation for gastric ulcers. The normally hyperechoic appearing superficial mucosa is replaced by a hypoechoic layer. The ulcer was present at this point. You can see this hypoechoic layer replacing the hyperechoic mucosa of the stomach. So this feature can indicate a gastric ulcer. After endoscopy, this was confirmed to be a gastric ulcer. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.